So hallelujah, everyone who's listening to this broadcast, Global Revival Church members, let God's grace be upon you. So today we're going to talk about the third part of the topic, relationship. So it's kind of like summarizing everything and how we have relationship with this world. So before we go there, we're going to kind of summarize everything from everything we learned in the past few days, and then we're going to continue on. So everyone who's listening to this broadcast, let God's grace and His new revelation and change in your life come. So I bless you guys. Amen. So first of all, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So the word in Romans chapter 12, so we're talking about what is in relation to this world. So in connection to this world, you know, we receive influence from this world. So don't become someone who's influenced and dragged by the influence of this world, but you yourself be renewed so that you can know what is his good will of God that is acceptable and perfect, and then to be someone that influences the world, not be influenced by the world. So in order for this to happen, you know, it says what you have to do first. It says, therefore, so I appeal to you, therefore, so your whole life, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to present your bodies, your whole life, as a living sacrifice to God. That is what it says in the beginning. So it's your choice. So everything in your life. So you have to choose and form where you're going to pick first, what you're going to choose first so that you can change people and influence this world. If you cannot, then you're going to rather be influenced by the world and you might compromise to the world and you don't even know that you're being influenced by the world and you're living like that. So you're being dragged by this world, influenced by this world instead of influencing it. So there's no fun, no inheritance, and there's no fruits in your life. So in order to do this, we have to go back to the foundation of the scriptures. So we have to go back to the principles and think about it. That's why Romans chapter 12, it says, Therefore, so that therefore connects the conclusion in Romans chapter 11, you know, because God is this person, this kind of per being, so that's why we have to do this. Therefore, we have to do this. That's why it says, I appeal to you, therefore. So Romans chapter 11, let's go to the last verse. This is the conclusion that leads into the therefore. So Romans 11 verse 36, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. So if we look be in the front part, it says all of the thoughts and plans that God has for us is deep. Something that we cannot even imagine. You know, God will do these deep things. His thoughts and His ways for us are so deep. So as we're living in this world, what does God want? What does He want to do? If you don't know, then everything that God does for us, you know, manifests because of His love, but you might not like it and you don't understand it. So that's why the reason it says, the, on, the only reason why we have to understand what His will is for us is in 36, verse 36, for of Him, all the starts of everything is from who? Everything is of Him. So everything is from Him, the Creator. And it's, it's fulfilled through who? Through Him. So through Jesus Christ, it becomes fulfilled. So in the end, who goes back to who? It goes back to Him. So for of Him, through Him, and to Him are all things. So does God change or He doesn't change? He doesn't change, right? So that's either from or to is the same. The start and the end is the same. So the through is us, it's through us. So that's the issue. You know, God's plan is that doesn't change. So we who live the through part, if we cannot understand God's plan and purpose and goal, then when we go through Him, we're going to resist, rebel, more confused, more hard, ships and more chaotic so we're just going to live a life full of pressure 
But if we understand God's picture, you know, he who speaks the end from the beginning, in Isaiah 46, verse 10, he speaks the beginning from the end from the beginning. You know, he doesn't change, he doesn't change what he says. So then we can understand the whole Bible from Genesis chapter 1. If we just read the whole story, what did God plan? How did we destroy our relationship? And how did God want to restore everything back to the original? So we're the same. So if our life wants to change, you know, our relationship, you know, he, we come from the Creator, so from Him. So unless we restore our relationship with Him first, then we cannot expect the rest. Because the life, the direction we have to leave, live, we don't know. You know, we have to learn from our Creator, the one, you know, the one who knows why He created us, the one who can explain to us what He created us for. So on, to, when we restore this relationship with the one who can lead us, then we can know who we are. That's why our relationship with Him is number one. That should our first priority. So through Jesus Christ, our relationship with Father God, unless it's completed and fulfilled, we cannot know who we are. And we might keep going to other than God or through a different source in this world. We're trying to define and find ourselves through this world rather than God. But that's all in vain and in vain and it's just going to be all empty and there's no, no meaning. Because you're living in the darkness, not the light. You know, only God is the light. He came as the light. So unless you receive what He wants to give to us through our connection and relationship, then we cannot know who we are. So the first thing we have to restore is our relationship with Father God. And if we now have this relationship with Father God, then through Him, you know, He shines His light through the light that He shines on us. We can know what He wants to do through us and what His plan and purpose is for our life and in what purpose He created us, in what generation, in what place to do what, why did He create us, you know, we can know when we have this relationship with Him. So our relationship with Father God has to be restored so we can know who we are. And when we know who we are, then our value, you know, we start to look at it from Father God. It's not the value that or value that you have that you perceived or perceived or your projected self or because of your wounded heart you think I am this victim I am this person you wouldn't live in those lies the original reason why he created you the original man the original person when you go back to that original then you'll be moved by his plan that he has for you. So even David, when he didn't know, he had a hard time. He wanted to run away. He wanted to escape. But you know, David said, even if I run away here, he's over there. If I escape there, he's there. You know, I, there's no way to go out of the palm of God's hand. Wherever you go, he's there. So people without God, you cannot live. That's how we were created. So we have the eternal life. And our lifeline, our true life, is only through the relationship with Father God. So when He reveals His plan for us, when we start to know His plan for us, then just like David's confession, you know, the thoughts that God has, you know, how many of those thoughts are from God? You know, if we fail, then there's another way. If we fail, there's another way to restore. So that kind of plan, you know, it's recorded in God's book. You know, we see ourselves. And then David was moved. He said, oh, the thoughts that God has towards me is so many. You know, your life seems such a mess. You know, it was so, live such a hard life, you know, in David's perspective. But that's not the truth. You know, God has such an amazing plan for me. But in the process of living your life, you know, where you don't agree with God, you know, the dark forces, dark spirits, evil spirits in all of our situations, you know, they start to hinder you, block you. So through the people who don't know God, you know, they transfer these things to you. You don't even know what was transferred to you, so you get wounded and you cannot know who you are. So then you start to realize that's why you don't know who you are. So the only way to know who you are is not this world standard. It's not people's standards. It's not the words you heard from your parents. 
But only from the one who created you, Father God, he says you are this kind of person. When you accept that, then you can know who you are. And you know, oh, I'm very special. I was created, you know, fearfully and wonderfully. I am unique. There's no one else that's the same as me in this world. You know, God created me specially, so I am special. So unless I do this area that God gave me to do, then this area in the kingdom cannot be fulfilled. You can have that confidence when you know who you are through God. So that light, His light has to shine on you. So when the light shines on, shines on you, do you know what God says? Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. What does God say to us? Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? So it says you are the salt of the earth. So the meaning of salt, you know, has some kind of taste, right, flavor. You know, it's to give seasoning to something else. And if the salt is defiled or, it's, you know, I mean, the salt can prevent something from being rotten. You know, salt has a clear purpose. So the salt, you know, rules over, reigns over the situation. It's not that the salt gets influenced by other things. So the salt, you know, influences, not get influenced. You know, but the salt, you know, salt, but it doesn't have flavor, then it's just dirt. It's just something part of this nature. You know, it would just be trampled on if, you, if it doesn't have flavor. And then the second thing is, you are the light of the world. So you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So God says, he didn't say that you're darkness. He says you are the light. So if he says that you are the light, then the light, you wouldn't leave the light where it's hidden, right? If you have confidence, you would just be bold and you would say, oh, I am this kind of person. You would boast to others. The more you try to hide, you know, it's like putting the lamp underneath the stand. You know, light that is covered, there's no meaning. You cannot do the role of the light. The light is to make it, you know, bright around you. So who you are. So when you know who you are, what kind of life you should live, you know, just being in that position, then your surrounding, through your light, you know, your light will shine on everything around you and the darkness will leave and the darkness cannot reign over this world. So you guys who believe in Jesus, so your position and you yourself, when you just know who you are, your identity, then your position in this world, you're not someone who will be dragged and influenced by this world but you'll be someone who can change and influence this world so if you want to be someone who can change and influence this world rather than be influenced then your inner man and you and your self relationship unless it's clear then you cannot change this world you cannot transform this world so unless you agree to yourself Unless you love yourself, unless you put value to who you are, if you don't receive that God made you the light of this world, then you're going to try to hide your life. You're going to try to run away. But look carefully. Because you are the light, even if you run away, you know, you'll still influence others or this world. Do you understand? Because you are the light, even if you try to run away, you know, there'll still be influence. So, because you don't recognize this, that's why you say that you're Christian, but you still live in all this suffering and hardship. You're living by being influenced instead of influencing because you're hiding your light. So, this your relationship between you and yourself has to be restored. So, let's go towards the, more about the light. So, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Okay, so let's look again. Is there any effect if you use a flashlight and, you know, bright, sunny day? You know, because the sun is so bright, there's no use in using your flashlight. So the light, where would the light shine the brightest? The more darker it is, the more the light will shine. So the end time, what does it say? 
you know, it's going to be more dark and the whole world, darkness shall cover the earth. But our role is to arise and shine for your light has come. To shine your light through you, the calling to shine your light, you have to do it so that you're, you, it talks about you and your relationship with this world so when you start to shine your light on this world and God at the same time when you start at the same time with his glory he's gonna cover you so that when you shine your light he will guarantee it with his glory so what does it say so everyone who's in the darkness they're gonna run to who they're gonna run to the light so when it's dark and night, where does the boat follow? It follows the lighthouse. You know, the boat follows the lighthouse. Have you ever been into like the captain area of the boat? You know, where do you where you move the wheel? Have you been there? So when you're in the boat, so it's on the right and left side, there's a light. There's a red light and a green light. So this red and green light, you know, it, it gives a signal in the dark. So if the boat wants to come in, you know, there's a pilot boat, you know, leads the big boat into the shore because the big boat cannot just come in. So that's the boat's path. So those pilots, you know, they're, they don't do much work, but they go out. You know, they're experts how to lead the boat back in through the darkness because they know the path to come back into the shore. You know, even the airplane when they, you know, land, you know, the ramp lights up to show you, to show the airplane what path they have to land in. So in the same way, your identity, your position, your position in this world, you are the salt of this earth and you are the light of the world. So as the light of the world, when you begin your work, then he's going to handle everything else. He's going to cover you with your, his glory. Then the light that shines out of you, you know, the one who, the source of the light is going to come and cover you. So, those who want the light will come to you. Those who are in the darkness will come to you. So, when your relationship with Father God is restored, and your relationship between you and yourself is restored, then you'll have stability. You won't conform to this world, and your life won't be defined by this world. Who you are doesn't get defined by someone else. You know, they have to compliment you to define who you are. No, even if they persecute you, you can know who you are because you are the light, right? So the way you recognize or see a situation will change. So as soon as you have the security and the truth, then you can shine your light out. As soon as you shine your light, it's very interesting. It says, you know, the earth will come to you. So even all the finance, all the treasures, all the materials, they're going to bring it to you when you shine your light. They will come to you. All the nations will come to you bringing all these treasures and finances. But if you don't do, know this, then you think, I have to do this so that I can fulfill it. You keep working harder and harder, but if you don't hear a good word, then you'll get disappointed and you'll lose hope. Because who you are, your definition, you didn't get it from God. Who you are didn't come from God. You got it from yourself, or you got it from your parents, or you got it from somewhere else. You receive the lies, you hold on to that as who you are. So the way to restore it is you have to have a clear relationship with Father God. So like what they say at the end of Romans 11, so through his deep re revelation, the way to know who we are is ev that everything comes from him, through him, and back to him. You know, it goes back to him. All the glory goes to him. You have to believe in that. So even where you're created from came from him. Your life you live, you know, you ch start to change through him. And you go back to his original way and even the conclusion. You know, it goes back to him. You know, the start and the end never changes in God. So just this process in between, you have to, with joy, willingly just go through all the processes. So your goal and his purpose for you when you recognize it and you know what it is and when you know who you are then with joy you would give your life to God when you know you know the start and end what is your purpose from God so then you wouldn't be conformed by this world you'll be someone who can change this world because you know what God has given you and in order for to do that there's some a few issues you know people get tempted you know we get tempted 
by who? Who do you get tempted by first? Tempted by number one? The devil. So the devil doesn't always tempt you. Even Jesus? You know, it's the devil tempted in the beginning of his ministry, he left, the devil left, right? And then he came back again at the end. So the devil, when you look at his temptations, so, you know, he always says, if you are truly the son of God, so the devil keeps testing you about your ID but in your relationship with Father God if you know clearly what your identity is then the devil cannot test you in that area so the test that Satan gives to you it's not continuous it's not always you know he only comes at certain issues so if you know the clear truth and you just say it then the devil can't even come near you do you understand? So the second temptation comes from who? The second temptation comes from who? So the first one was the devil, but he only tests sometimes. But then, what is the second one? You're tempted by mankind, by other people. So what you're tempted by other people, does it come sometimes or does it come always? It always comes. And it doesn't end. It's continuous. The man, other people tempting you is continuous. So no matter what situation you are in, you know, there's always temptation around you. You know, we live in that world until he comes back and this whole world changes. Until he changes into a new thing, you know, as long as you're alive, there's always going to be temptation from this world or mankind. The words that this mankind says to you, so how this world attacks you if you don't understand if you don't understand how other people attack you and you, you don't know how to overcome in those situations you'll be easily deceived because they're always going to try to tempt you it's going to continuously come to tempt you what about the third one so first one is devil second one is mankind who is the third one that tempts you you tempt yourself so yourself it's your own greed and selfish inside of you. So let's go to James chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. So don't say that God tempts you. You know, God doesn't tempt you. The reason why you get tempted is because of your own desires inside of you, your own lust. Your own greed, selfish desires, your lust. You know, deceives you and you get tempted by it. God doesn't tempt you. So when, lu when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it has run its course, brings forth death. So does God make you fall to a disease to prevent you from doing something? No, that's the wrong interpretation. So your own thoughts, what you want to do, your own desires, you get tempted by it. Unless you throw those away. So the most hindering thing is what? You know, what you like the most hinders you the most. What you want to do the most. What you cannot give up. What you still hold on to. When you move forward with God, that blocks you and hinders you the most. So when you have relationship with yourself, you know, it blocks the light that God wants to shine on you. So through Him, you have to give your life to Him. So throwing away what you like doesn't mean that it's completely gone. You know, people are afraid of throwing it away because they think it's going to be you know, fully gone. They cannot see it again. So you know, to leave your parents, it doesn't mean to cut them off and pretend you don't know them. But you know, where there's so many wounds in this relationship, you know, some kind of principle or foundation habits or that kind of atmosphere, leave that thing from your family line and come to Him in the new thing that He wants to give to you. So the original marriage that God has planned or the fathership that God has planned, so learn your identity, who you are through that. So to leave, it means the byproducts. The byproduct, the situation that those who are sinners, you know, leave that evil situation, leave those negative things, and go into His truth, go into His presence. So go to the place He has chosen is that, where His presence is, where His glory manifests, where His light shines on us. So go to that place. So not completely cut off, but just leave those wounds, those atmosphere that you know habits so where you worship God so the place where you worship God where you seek Him 
That's the my place he has chosen for you. Do you understand? So the three tempted by, there's three things that always tempt you, which is the devil. The devil doesn't always tempt you. Whenever you try to level up or when they test your ID, that's when devil comes. But if you proclaim the truth, then the devil cannot come back. The second one is mankind, other people, those who belong to this world. They're always going to tempt you. They're going to continually always come to you. So even me in college, you know, the professor is trying to test me with the word. But because I speak the truth, you know, that's why the professor keeps coming. He keeps challenging my word, try to mess up, and then to cover the light. You know, the more I try to show the light, you know, they have a hard time. Because the more you shine your light, you know, they have a hard time. So we can move forward more boldly. Those who are in the darkness should be afraid. Those who are in the light, they have nothing to hide. The more they hide, the light is gone. You know, they have nothing to hide. That's why they can boldly and confidently proclaim the truth. And they can shine their light into this world. That is your position. So that is what it means to know who you are in this world. So the more important thing, so what kind of battle happens? So when you try to do, do you truly give spiritual worship or not? So if you want to give true worship, then you shouldn't be conformed to this world. You shouldn't be conformed by this world. And if you don't want to be conformed by this world, then your thinking has to change. You have to have a renewed mind. The new value system that God gives you, the kingdom values, God's mindset, you know, to have Jesus Christ's heart in you, you know, do not be conformed to this world, but, you know, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. You know, to have the same thoughts as Jesus, then you can shine the light to this world and you can influence this world. So when you live in this world, there's still two world systems. So the Bible clearly talks about it. So one is Egypt, the Egypt system, the Egyptian system. And the second one is the Babylon, Babylon system. So it's a little different. So these are the two world systems that are still in this world. So when they did Exodus, so in Exodus chapter 1, let's read from verse 8. Then we can understand the situation at that time and we can interpret it spiritually. So, Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply, and if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad, and the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves. And made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. So it's there for now. So when the kings knew Joseph, you know, they received grace and they worked together. You know, Israel prospering at that time. Do you think it was weak? You know, there was a lot of Israel, but they wasn't bothered. Why? Because they had the same grace upon them. When the king knew who, when the Pharaoh, king knew who Egypt, but now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. So they don't, this king that doesn't acknowledge how Egypt changed through Joseph. So their connection with God got disconnected. So that's why they suddenly had fear. So what did they say? You know, Egypt has a lot of gods. You know, they serve many gods. But they say that the Israelites were stronger than them, stronger than them, more mighty than them. Do you understand? They say they were more mighty for us. You know, you know, the Israelites only served one God, and the Egypt served many gods, but they are stronger than us, more mighty than us. So that's why they have to oppress them, make them work, make them be a slave. So you can easily say, so the way that Egypt rose over, so if you want to serve your God, serve your God. We're not going to prevent you from serving your God. Because, you know, they also serve many gods. So you can serve your own god. I'm not going to prevent you, but... 
you know, but, you know, they oppress them to make it so that you cannot serve God. You know, they make them a slave, suppress and depress, so that they don't have the comfort or the time to serve God. So when we live in this world, there's a lot of hardships. So, you know, that's oppressed, suppressed and depressed, and then they make you do labor, hard labor. But who are they working for right now? They are working for Egypt. The slaves, they have no salary. Slaves, no matter how much work they do, there's no inheritance. You know, they work like a slave. So the one who believes, they're, you know, they're working as a slave so that the people who don't believe in God, who are in this world, will prosper. But then, you know, so they don't have time to serve their God, but those who are in this world are saying, you know, try serve your God, but they don't have the time to that. So this worldly material, so they made the Christians like a slave. How? Through oppression, depression, and suppression. In captivity, bondage, yoke, and chain. So what did they say later? So that made their lives bitter with hard service. So they made everything hard with bitterness. They thought that would work out. You know, they thought then the Israelites would stop multiplying. You know, they would have a hard time so they wouldn't multiply anymore. But what does the Bible say? The, oppressed, the more they were oppressed, they multiplied even more. And they spread abroad even more. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was, saved, who was named Shpura and the other Pua, when you serve as a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she okay, shall live. So yeah, th that's why they moved on to the next plan because they wouldn't stop multiplying. So it says to the midwives, when you know, help them when they give birth, but look at their gender. If it's a son, kill them. If it's a daughter, let they can live. So in the Bible, when they talk about a woman, what does the woman symbolize in Revelation chapter 12? The dragon tried to kill the pregnant woman. So what does the woman represent? The woman represents the church. The child? How about the child? What does the son represent? The son represents vision. Jesus Christ, the vision, Messiah. So to kill the sons means... You know, you may have the form of church. You know, if you want to worship, you can worship. But there's no hope, dream, or vision. Get rid of it. So that's what it is. Do you understand what it means? That's the Egyptians. So you work hard for this world. You know, you may receive salary. You know, you want to fulfill something in this world. But what you do in that work... It doesn't help to build up the kingdom or serve God, but you're actually helping to build up the more evil things of this world. That's what happens. So rather than working to serve and build up the kingdom, you're working for the people in this world to build up the world instead of the kingdom of God. So then you don't get anything out of it. So you don't have a vision. So there's no home because they're a slave. They have no vision. They have no dream. So while your you know, system is bound, you know, they make you live as a slave so that this world system you know, rules over you. So you, even if you want to worship and go before God, you know, you wouldn't even have the time to do so. That is what the Egypt system is. They oppress you so that you cannot even have the, the time or leisure to worship God. You know, back then, even if the men worked, they could make money. You know, then the women could just do the spiritual things, you know, the household things. You know, at that time, you know, they lived very joyfully. But what, how did the social system change now? You know, unless you work, then nothing can be done. You know, women have to work, men have to work. So then there's no time. Then there's no time to worship. You're tired. You have a hard time. But the Jewish, you know, by grace, you know, they kept multiplying by God's grace. That's why they say kill the sons. That means kill the vision that God has given us. So they get rid of the way to know who you are. You know, living as a slave is your original purpose. You know, it engraves into you. You know, there's a church, but there's no power of the church. You're a Christian, but your life, you're not interested in building up the kingdom. You're just working as a slave to this world. That's your life. So what should you do? You have to, you know, leave. You have to leave Egypt. So let my people go. So go to his people, which is the promised land. Through what? 
through the Passover. So by the blood of the covenant of Jesus Christ, your life, your thinking, everything that's bounding you, oppressing you, suppressing you, you know, prevents you from being free. And to know who you are through God and God's purpose and His will for you, you have to leave that system. This, using the blood of Jesus, you have to break it. Your thinking has to change. You know, your concept of slave has to change. That's why there was the wilderness. You know, they needed to through Him to fulfill His purpose. So even right now, you know, they oppress you in the same way, right? If your goal is on money, you get led by money. If you shine your light, then the finance will just come to you. That's what has to change. It's not if you chase after money, if you love money, that's the root of evil. So if you shine your light, then the money will just come to you. The money will chase after you, not the other way around. So your picture has to change. It's your kingdom come, your will be done. So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then all will be added to you. So it doesn't mean don't do it, but your goal has to be different, your way has to be different. And what you do, whatever you do has to be to build up this kingdom and your inheritance, not in the way this world works or the Egyptian way, the way to rule over this generation. All those systems, is it happens when you compromise with the world. Okay? So you're the light of this world and you're the salt of this world. Don't be influenced by the world. If you don't have the light and salt, then you cannot live. Okay? So the second world system, the first one is Egypt, the second one is Babylon. So Babylon's a little different, so let's go to Daniel, chapter 1. So let's go to verse 1 to 7. Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. So what do they do? So in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jeho Je 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 Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Okay. So the Babylon system is a little different. So the Egypt system, you know, you can try to worship, you can worship if you want, but they make the situation where you cannot worship. So you get tired and you're bound because you're living as a slave, so you don't even have the time or heart to worship. That's the Egypt way. But Babylon's way, how, what do they do? They're your next generation, they bring the children to their territory. They bring the children to their territory. So all of your knowledge, all the training, all your thoughts, all your lifestyle, you know, they change it to which style? To the Babylon style. You know, LGBTQ right now, you know, they they put it the idea into even little children. How? In the Babylon style. So if, if you just, the church just lets them be, then you just die. As time goes on, what happens? You know, you become Babylon style. You know, the outer shell is Jewish. The outer shell, you say, I believe by your life. Your thoughts, everything, you're going according to the Babylon way. You're serving their idols. You have to have their thinking pattern. You have to have their lifestyle. You're compromising with the world. You're becoming their tool. You're, you're compromising with the world. So do you think those kind of people can change Nineveh? No. So only Jonah went to transform Nineveh, change Nineveh. So how, what is the way to break this? So what does this word mean? So in your life, in your situation, who do you put more importance to? You have to choose. The system, the world system, or some kind of current or trend like TikTok? If you get influenced by that, and you know those kind of thoughts just come inside of you whether you realize or not. You know, they gave the king's delicacies, the food of this world, you know, they make, you, they provide everything. 
you know, even being chosen like this, they become a good position. But whether you realize or not, you become and they're compromising with this world, living in according to their way. You lose the kingdom of God. That is LGBTQ. Or this is like the Gen Z, you know, change their thoughts to this according to this world. So what kind of people do we need in this time? We need people like Daniel. That's why let's go to verse 8. What does it say? But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You know, he chose and decided to follow God's way. You have to make that kind of next generation. You know, as soon as you go against, you might die. You might get persecuted. You might be harmed. You might be outcasted. You might be mocked. But, you know, you purpose in your heart that I belong in Jesus Christ as God's person. I, I came to shine my light on this world. And when you choose God, then you just need 10 days. You know, test me for 10 days. You know, he pretty much risked his life. So when he was tested, you know, the one who chose God will shine their light even more. Those who chose God, you know, 10 times more rather than this world. So rather than the professors who teach LGBTQ, you know, one Christian can just change everything. You know, they cannot even do anything. So it's kind of like the professors and the scholars came and challenged me. I'll tell you more about later. So it's just one word. You know, the professor ran away and was afraid. The professor didn't come to class. Why? Because when one person shines their light, they're afraid of that. So in this time, so based on God's revelation, you know, they're trying to get rid of this new generation. So with God's revelation, you have to raise up the new generation and change, you know, this world's thoughts and come back to God so that they would be afraid of God. That's this generation that we have to raise up right now. That's Babylon. You know, they, they, they try to, you know, destroy and kill this generation, you know, change the thoughts from kingdom of God to this world. So that's what they're trying to do right now. It's very serious right now. You know, the thinking patterns that are put into us is very serious. The church has, church has to be alive. You have to know who you are and what kind of work you're supposed to do in this world. But in your thinking pattern, you know, there's so many things of the world that is in you already. Do you change your, do they release an Apple phone about every two years? Or about one or two years? So when do you change the, your phone? Do you change with regret or you just change it? You know, you can just change it without regret, right? But how much money does it cost to change your phone? It takes, it's about more than a thousand dollars, right? So when you give a thousand dollars to Apple, you don't hesitate, right? You don't think about it or have a hard time about it, right? You just want to change your phone. But before God, when you give, you know, offering or give your heart, you know, bringing thousand dollars, can you just bring a thousand dollars to God with no hesitation? Most people cannot. They might say this, oh, you can just pay monthly to, for Apple. So let's say that, like Daniel purposed, can you proclaim, I'm going to do this monthly payment to God? Can you say that? So the worldly ways, whether you realize or not, it's already inside of you. What the world goes, you know, you don't even think about it. You're not worried about it. You just do what you want to do. You pay if you want. If you want it, you buy it. You don't even know, you're worried about what kind of influence that gives, but coming to God, you know, it's kind of weird. M many people, when they backslide, do you know what they stop doing first? They stop giving offering, and they even stop the times that they come to church. They cut off everything. Whose way is that? That is the Babylon way. That's the Babylonian style. So whether you realize or not, in your life, 
when you have a relationship with God, you learned in the state where you didn't have the grace of God. So in the religious way, you cannot recognize these things. You have to come back to Him and through relationship with Him, when He teaches you who you are and when you receive His love and you love yourself, his goal and purpose is calling for you when you go all in and you love yourself and everything in this world you're not influenced by this world and you just keep moving forward for God's purpose then automatically you'll shine your light and you can change this world so if you shine your light then this world will come to ask you for help so I hope your perspective changes so in all relationship Go back to the foundation, the basics that God is talking to you. So if you have regret in this world or you don't want to give up something that makes battles in your life, it makes your life chaotic. As Babylon or Egypt system, it's working in you. Only through Jesus Christ, when you choose to follow Him only, the revelation on how to break this, you know, rule and reign over this world he's going to give you the revelation and wisdom you know god gave daniel even 10 times more wisdom to understand everything no matter how much knowledge they have and they see that they're smart or they're wise they cannot change this world so you know christians can understand how you know Foolish the question that the professor asked me is, but you know, they probably thought, oh, it was such a wise question, like Nicodemus came to Jesus. So the truth that we can speak, the most basic foundation, other than saying, go back to Jesus Christ, there's nothing else. We have to believe in that. So everyone who's listening to this broadcast, so everything in your life, all the messed up things, all the messed up relationship, through Jesus Christ, let your relationship with Father God be restored, and the light and glory that he has put inside of you so you and yourself will change and you can change this world so believe that you're someone who can change this world and with his power and authority you know shine your light live that kind of life so i bless you in his name amen